that cool? So, how, what, how many is that? 20? Two, 22 each. Wow, how long did that take? This is a story of how one community is coming together to make a difference during the coronavirus quarantine. The community is activating through the use of technology, but really the story is about people. It's about makers, engineers, nurses and teachers, volunteers, and even people who might not think of themselves as any of these identities. All everyday people, all learning that by coming together, their community is finding ways to support itself and its neighbors. This story begins at PVNet, a STEM learning academy in Palos Verdes, a place in greater Los Angeles' South Bay where people go to learn ways to embrace technology. We started out with, with, this, with, the, with the goal in mind to provide a place to go learn things that you haven't heard about, seen, didn't know existed, but they were going to be a big part of your life at some point and change the world. Ted Begbari of PVNet says the academy serves 400 students a year in an interdisciplinary environment with a technology-rich approach. When California issued the stay-at-home order, the academy closed its doors to the public, but it didn't turn off the lights or its machines. Everybody here at our center who volunteered, we're primarily a volunteer center. The, uh, we all agreed that we have to do something. You, to you, we're going to shut down. Uh, there's not going to be any classes, hands-on programs here. So we said, okay, we got 3D printers, we got laser cutters, we've got you know, a small CNC, we can, we've got all, all this fabrication equipment. Let's make product. PVNet started retooling its operation. Its 3D printers, normally used in science and engineering projects, were optimized to output face shields. These, along with other supplies known as personal protective equipment, have been in the news because they act as a crucial defense from infection, and they're in dire short supply. It just became very obvious that we had the, the country wasn't prepared for any of this, and putting a putting a contagion into public spaces and then expecting people who work in the in the industry of healthcare industry, any industry that's that's going to be required to keep things I'll say keep the country running, putting them out there without protection is insane. When PVNet asked the community if anyone needed face shields they discovered an immediate need from local service providers. I think in the very beginning was like small pharmacies, um, just, you know, miscellaneous individuals. Um, and then as it grew on, like it was um, like an ER out in Fontana, but I think then like um, local part, you know, local police started to hear about us. And then they spread the, the word that, um, you know, they could get um, protective gear from from us, and so then that way, you know, everybody who isn't covered by like the big companies that are making these face shields, they get protected too. Small hospitals have been, you know, requesting for it because the little guys, I mean, those are the ones that are having, um, you know, issues getting materials. And so, um, you know, whenever, when they do hear of, you know, people making face shields, they're like, yes, thank goodness. What else is there? Paramedics too. It is word to you know word of mouth, and 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 in this operation is you know really less local. In a supply and demand landscape currently filled with stories of price gouging and product hoarding, PVNet is looking at its work not as a commodity, but as community building. Every face shield is provided to police, paramedics, firefighters, and hospitals for free. The design templates being used were found online. PVNet chose designs developed, tested, and vetted by 3D product designers working with medical experts. PVNet has volunteer teams that print, check, finish, and fulfill orders. When a user provides feedback, PVNet takes the design back to the digital drawing board to make adjustments. All right, so what I'm doing right now is actually attempting to cut down the model so that, um, we, so that we can print with less material and turn them out faster. One of the nurses actually mentioned that at their current thickness, which is up here, um, it's, uh, it can slide off people's foreheads and... Um, different size heads have different needs. Yeah, and um, that she, she put the elastic strap on one of the ones that, uh, on one of the 3D prints that failed kind of halfway through. It was above this part here. And she said that she actually liked that one better than the um, full size one. So I'm gonna try to cut down that file and, 
and slice it up and see what happens. So he's, he's doing a redesign on the uh, Prusa model. We're not changing major elements, but we're just thinning it down height-wise. Printing 24 hours a day, seven days a week with machines running at double speed or more, PVNet has quickly reached its 3D printing capacity. The Academy dips into its operating fund to buy more printers as demand requires. Uh, these two printers just finished uh, basically printing two double nine stacks of headsets. These are the new ones that we purchased a, a bunch of. PVNet's latest goal is to increase output by almost double. Uh, this is kind of like the output on a daily basis. It's about 80, and eh, somewhere around 80 or so right now. We're, we're ramping up to try to get to 120 or 150 a day, but you're looking at um, fresh off the printer. We really need like five or six more printers than we have here to, to ramp up to 2,000 a week. That would, that would be excellent. What would I really like? I would love to be able to do 5,000 a week for the foreseeable future uh, because we got great volunteers that will come in and help with this in their free time because they can't go to work. But there's always something that we can do. We just need to look for, you know, the solution. And, and, and you know, maybe everybody's shell-shocked right now, but there's that opportunity to contribute to, to solve the problem. PVNet says the Academy will keep printing as long as there's a need, and as long as they can keep paying for supplies. The Academy's approach of experiencing STEM and even art provides a reminder of how to keep the creative spirit alive. Um, creativity does not have to be regimented through engineering principles. It, it, art has its own, own set of principles. So we, we, we have an open space that has art, many different types of art, uh, you name it, I think we've got it here, uh, or addressing it or teaching it or doing a project in it for experiential purposes for the students. And, um, and we combine that with them seeing people doing things with robotics and engineering and biotechnology. And all of a sudden, they become comfortable. We rehabilitate their fears into, oh, this is incredibly related. We can all work together and we can all combine skills to come up with better things, better solutions, re improve what's there, come, you know, design things that aren't there. Well, you, uh, you're doing really amazing work at PVNet, and I just want to thank you for spending some time to explain what you're doing. Even when you're not running the academy, you're figuring out how to do amazing things. So uh, that's that's really inspiring. I, yeah, thank thank you very much. I really appreciate your your kind comments. Thank you, and I hope everybody does well and it gets out of this.